second part of the Budapest Gambit, one of the one of two most successful and at the same time most common moves by White. For example, Boris Averich in his book covered this fourth move, Knight of Three, as one of, I don't want to call it like the refutations of the Gambit, but Everett just said, if you want to apply for the opening advantage, that's how you should be going for. So, uh, once again, for all of you who just want to see the moves, <clears throat> let me just show you. So, d4, knight f6, c4, e5, d takes knight g4, and knight to f3. So, after knight f3, they just defend this pawn, and uh, we have a possibility to play knight e6, and then they go bishop f4, but since I'm of opinion that the bishop f4 is probably the most dangerous in practice move against the Budapest Gambit, uh, I very much like the bishop c5 move. It's very uh, committal for white, because this attack on f2 forces white to remain passive. Uh, they have to play e3 simply, and that's what I like about the bishop c5 move. Uh, for the rest of the game, the dark square bishop on c1 uh, will remain passive, and it will have to look for other forms and types of activity. So after e3, knight c6, and here they go knight c3. I just want to show you like a game between uh, two uh, guys, one guy uh, with white pieces was Adler, another guy was famous Marozzi, and this queen d5, in most cases, uh, since it defends pawn on e5, uh, looks okay for, for, for white, but uh, in practice, uh, it's not good at all. Uh, basically, queen is very exposed, and we just go after it and keep on chasing it. After queen e7, defend the bishop, and we want to get a pawn back on e5. Knight takes e5, bishop e2, and d6. Uh, Adler made clearly mistake knight e4. He probably had to put that queen back from the center. And why well, just keeps pursuing a bad plan, and now uh, the game should be over very soon after bishop e6, uh, bishop e4, check, and played a long castle. Just take a look at the position. Uh, I already like favors, um, favor black game, black's game, because uh, we are now just gonna threaten to take on f3 or just immediately break in the center with d5. After bishop e4, knight b4, queen b3, uh, he took on f3, played d5. So the queen on e7 defended the knight, and he threatened the knight, knight e2, d takes, knight c4, rook to d3, captured the piece, played knight c2, and uh, the finish of this game was very nice. If king f1, rook to d1, checkmate, since <coughs> double check, and then king on e2, for example, choose this one with the rook d4. This was one of the crucial games uh, for the whole Budapest Gambit, and this is how it became very popular, um, actually very popular. This is how it got its name, because it was played in Budapest in 1896, and thanks to this game, everybody started to play this and uh, practice this opening uh, from Black's point of view. So after knight f3, once again, don't forget to do this bishop c5 because you just want to force your opponent to play e3 and for the rest of the game to remain passive with a dark square bishop. After knight c6, knight c3. Uh, I'm warning you here, you have to play castle because most of you show like a very bad tendency in gambit. Uh, usually it happens on lower levels. You sack one pawn, and then if you don't have any mating threats or whatever, you immediately want to get a pawn back. Keep in mind, you're not supposed to take on e5 here. It's a serious mistake, because they should be taking. Play f4, and uh, after knight c6, bishop d3, followed by queen h5. Uh, I remember I played a couple of games by myself uh, here, with white pieces, crushed my opponents very early and very easily, played queen h5, 
a castle of brick, you have three of brick, each three of brick, lifting and one my deans. So don't forget, you're supposed to make short castle, not to get a pawn immediately back on e5 because of the line I showed you. After castles, bishop e2, I like to divide uh, these two positions into uh, two different variations. Uh, should we take on e5 immediately or play uh, rook e8? Uh, according to Averick's book, black should play rook e8 as a, a better approach. I agree that it's uh, absolutely fine continuation for black. And what I like about a rook e8 move is that they actually uh, uh, keep uh, proposing white to play h3 or to make some side moves, in which case black anyways would capture an e5 and white would just lose a tempo. Anyways, I like rook e8, but I'm not going to cover that move as a main one. I'll go with a5 as the main choice, and we're just going to be following the game between Boris Gelfand and Richard Rappert, uh, extremely talented Hungarian GM, young guy who always comes up with these interesting systems, and he played the a5 himself, and I'll show you how did he treat uh, that variation in his game. Anyways, after <clears throat> knight g5, uh, we'll discuss about this later. What after rook e8? Castles, knight e5, knight e5, and knight e5. Uh, you can see the full point of bishop c5, pawn on e3, and this rook on e8. They can hardly play f4, uh, because this rook on e8, all together with the bishop on c5, they just make a very nice pressure against the pawn on e3. Uh, they can hardly play f4 because of knight c6 or knight g6, and f5 is going to be hanging. Also, in some positions, when they play like knight a4, uh, you're just, or knight e4, you're going to have a possibility to bring the bishop back to f8 with normal, uh, more or less normal position. Uh, most of people just want to find a good way for uh, to develop the bishop, and they just go with b3. And here, this variation with rook e8 divides into two different systems. So this is more like, I'm just trying to give you like basic ideas, and you'll decide whether you want to play seventh move a5, or you want to play, sorry, 7th uh, move, knight takes e5, or rook e8. So after b3, you just go with uh, a5. That's a classic move. That's one of the uh, most typical uh, ideas in Budapest Gambit by Black, uh, with the rook lifting ideas by Black. Uh, for example, I remember when I checked this game for the first time, um, I mean, this variation for the first time, and just because of this idea, I like the Budapest Gambit so much. Uh, idea is obvious. So after bishop b2, rook to a6. You want to place your rook on g6 or h6. You want to place your rook on g5, but mainly on h4. And, and that's how you launch the attack. They can never play any f4 because of e3 weakness. So uh, position is already very dangerous for white. I'm not saying that this variation uh, is not better for white uh, with precise play and good analysis, but it requires at least like um, uh, surgent like precision by white in order to get a, a you know like a nice advantage by white. That's one plan. But against b3, actually I played this a couple of times online, and I felt that the guys who did against me d6. They had like uh, way better chances. First of all, when I play a5 and rook a6, somehow I should never play d6 before I develop this rook and go to g6 or h6. So I found it a little bit difficult for myself uh, because uh, I've been thinking about like, can I do some d6? No, I shouldn't do it because I first have to uh, place my rook onto the king's side and I'm always somehow uh, behind in development. But if you play d6, uh, plan is very interesting. So when they play bishop d2, you play rook to e6. Take a look at this nice rook lifting plan. Uh, you're threatening uh, two kind of things. 
you want to play queen h4 and you want to place your rook on g6 or h6. For example, it's not easy for treatment by white because usually uh, players will be very confused. And remember uh, one very interesting game between uh, Vishmanavin and Cotronius where a guy played g3. And looks fine because he just wants to play some uh, g3 maybe, you know, to stop and prevent queen f4, queen h4. But all of a sudden, rook comes to h6. And your queen goes via h3 by d7. You also have the bishop h3 as a threat with the bishop. You also have, like, good control of the white squares. But okay, uh, here, you just want to go queen d7 and queen h3. These are options and some ideas for you to use in the uh, future. And of course, you can just uh, list some games online and find this continuations. Although, after bishop e2, instead of rook e8 on seventh move that I just showed you, I'm going to show you the 95 line. So when they take, you take, they go castles and we go a5. Once again, uh, instead of a5, we can be going with d6. And when they play b3, we just go with either rook e8 or rook e6, similar type of plan that was used in Catronia's game. Um, but you also can go with a line bishop d7, placing your bishop on c6, or mm, you, you can go with one more plan here, rook e8, c6, and queen g5, very interesting one. Uh, and finally, you can immediately uh, kick off with this queen onto the king side with the queen h4. And in case they go g3, you just put the queen back because you say, okay, I'm happy. Uh, I created some weaknesses in the light squares. Let me just play the very next move, bishop h3. I'll show you a game of mine playing in blitz. I said, okay, I'll play queen h3 to play knight g4. The guy played knight d5. And when I played knight g4, uh, he captured and played f3. So his knight on d5 was good controller. Uh, bishop on c5 looks like I'm close to do something and to create something, but actually I've got nothing. And I believe that I somehow managed to make a draw, but I was very lucky that game. So queen d8, it's hard to believe that you just want to provoke g3, but yes, you do want to do that because you'll play bishop h3 afterward c6 with like a full flexibility and uh, finally uh, instead of this variation early d6 i'm just uh, opting for a5 the point of a5 is uh, typical and just like i previously told you uh, most regular type of rook lifting and ideas cope with placing this rook from the very queen side to the very king side. So after a5, uh, main line according to theory is king h1. I'll show what happens if they play knight a4. Uh, that's also considered to be correct response by white, which poses a strong question. Whether we want to have this rook on e8 and put a bishop back on f8, or we still want to put it here on uh, a7. This is the game Posny against Nidic. And uh, after uh, c5, d6, he takes, he takes. Even though we have some problems with this pawn on d6, I believe after queen h4 and rook e8, possibly with the idea of bishop b8, knight g4, rook a6, rook g6, typical rook lifting ideas, uh, black is a great uh, compensation. I very, in, very much enjoy this position. And inability by white to place that queen from d6 to g3 is another uh, big problem of uh, white in this game. And uh, finally, in case they go with b3, you just go d6, bishop b2, bishop d7, knight c3, rook e8. And now Nidic found a nice way to once again use the rook lifting idea, and similar to Vishmanavin Konkroni has gained code with rook e6 and plays that rook and h6 afterwards. After f4 and knight 6 now the e3 pawn was weak. Apart from that, instead of this move, you can go with a rook h6. They can't take. And after, because if they take, you just have a nice check, check, 
this one and checkmate. So that would be uh, okay, not immediately checkmate, but after check, this one, this would be checkmate. So you see, you have like lots of attacking potential in this position. Then when they play g3, knight c6. I'm really of opinion that with this hidden bishop on a7, possibly we pawn here, uh, possibility to play bishop h3, rook on h6, that always have some t interesting tactical ideas. Knight e7, knight f5, going against g3 and e3 pawns. Black has more than good compensation. Um, apart from this, instead of knight a4, they can play b3. b3 is what mostly people do. And I'll show you the game between Mihailov and Vladislav Kovalev played last year in Moscow. Uh, this girl played bishop e2, rook e8, knight e5, and Kovalev played rook h6. He was threatening queen h4, and after knight f4, queen h4. After h3, d6. Uh, all of a sudden, idea could be g5 followed by bishop h3. But maybe not g5, not maybe. Not g5 immediately because of g3 and the queen would be trapped. So also be very cautious when you attack here, just not to find yourself into some sort of like uh, counter problems. So after rook e1, knight g6. Let's remove the main defender of the h3 pawn. Now white played knight h5, knight e5, knight f4. This girl was happy with the draw and Kovalev played queen g5. Uh, he now threatened to take the pawn on h3. And after king f1, uh, played a very nice move, bishop b4. a3, took there, played b6, removed this knight. And just when she took on g6, uh, Kovalev did this rook h3 and won the game. That's why I like these positions for black, because uh, we've got the great attacking potential uh, here. After b3, rook a6, uh, knight a4. Bishop a7, c5, uh, doesn't bring much either. You just play rook h6. And in case of f4, you just play knight c6 and undermine these pawns. After bishop b2, rook e8, queen d4. This is game of mine played in blitz uh, two nights ago. And here I just realized that my opponent wants to play f4, that I can't play queen h4, and I played rook g6. Uh, not because I want to attack here. Play, I do want to play d6, go after the queen and pawn. I do want to play bishop h3. But mainly, I want to overprotect the g7 pawn with a rook g6. Black looks good. And black has a very, very nice game after rook g6. So, uh, this was my game. I won this game in like a couple of moves, but not because my position was like completely winning. It's not. I do have a great initiative, but because he at some point made a mistake and got under a serious and very severe mating attack. Uh, all things considered, King H1 with Gelfand played against Rockport is considered to be one of the most solid solutions. Uh, White wants to follow up with F4, that's the main point of King H1, and uh, he just wants to uh, get rid of uh, the activity and importance of this bishop on the diagonal a7, g1. So after king h1, d6, f4, knight c6, b3, rook e8, and here uh, Gilfan played rook to f3. Uh, that is committal uh, because I don't think he can play e4. Worst case scenario, I can play bishop d4 and get a pawn back if I want immediately. Um, but definitely uh, Black's position already uh, looks uh, nice. We have some queen h4 ideas, we have some rook e6, and uh, Black, Black is absolutely fine. That's why Gelfand played rook f3, bishop f5, and White's position uh, looks very uncomfortable here, and uh, weakness on e3 uh, is becoming every next move uh, like worse and worse. And uh, after rook to g3, it's kind of interesting that Gelfand used this rook f3 plan not just to defend his pawn on e3 as a weakness, but also to go with the attack after bishop b2, knight e5. Uh, rook e6 uh, was nice defensive move as well. So after bishop d3, 
Uh, he can't play bishop e2 because e3 pawn is hanging. He can't play e4 because it's hanging. Played bishop d3. Knight before queen e7. And after this move, played queen h4. I hope you see the threat. If you don't see the nasty threat, it's bishop e2, queen takes g3, h takes g3, and rook h6. A very nice mating pattern. So, uh, in the game was, uh, of course, if f5, you just take on g3. They take rook h6, g takes, bishop h6, bishop d, bishop d4, and uh, black will have a nice game and initiative after a4, uh, opening up the a-file and doing like numerous of tactical tricks. After rook f3, knight c2, this was a nice move by Richard Rapport because white can't capture because of checkmate. So after rook b1, queen e1, he went into this type of position, rook g6, uh, captured, kicked the knight away and play this type of an endgame. So black's powerful knight on d3 and passed pawn on e4, uh, all these things uh, just guarantee a huge advantage to uh, black that uh, Robert eventually in Wycons in 2014 managed to uh, actually uh, take advantage of and he won the game. Uh, all things considered, I hope that you like this presentation of the knight f3. Uh, I hope that you are going to remember that you have to first play bishop c5. That you are going to remember that you shouldn't rush taking back on e5 here. That you, you have to play castle. And here you choose whether you want to take on e5 immediately or first play rook e8. Uh, if you play rook e8, don't forget you have two uh, good plans at disposal here. One is typical. A5 followed by rook a6 with a rook lifting idea and queen on h4 or g5. And another plan is more recent and popular one with b6 and using the rook lifting but using the rook from e8. Finally, in uh, the main file I was covering a5 and after castles a5, uh, we just want to go with this traditional plan. Once again, we can go with early d6 and here, don't forget you just have a nice position, but those who play king h1, rook h6 would become absolutely useless, so you can just play d6. Hope you enjoyed the presentation, thank you so much, and see you on the third part with the fourth move, bishop f4. Bye.